Nietzsche contra Wagner is a critique and polemic by Friedrich Nietzsche against the composer Richard Wagner, whom Nietzsche initially admired but later repudiated. In this work, which consists of a collection of previous writings as well as new sections, Nietzsche articulates his criticisms of Wagner's music, cultural influence, and philosophical ideas, contrasting them with his own philosophical outlook. Nietzsche begins by reflecting on his previous relationship with Wagner and his own naivety in believing that Wagner's music represented a revitalization of German culture. He acknowledges his early infatuation with Wagner's music, seeing it as a gateway to a profounder understanding of life, a sentiment widespread among Wagner's admirers. However, Nietzsche eventually came to the conclusion that Wagner's art was incompatible with his own philosophical ideals, primarily because Wagner's compositions, in Nietzsche's view, promoted life-denying values and decadent emotional excesses rather than the life-affirming values Nietzsche advocated. Nietzsche criticizes Wagner's use of music to manipulate the listener's emotions, asserting that Wagner's operas are essentially theatrical and spectacles rather than genuine works of art. He argues that Wagner's music is rooted in the desire to exert power over the audience, to mesmerize them into a state of passive receptivity rather than encouraging active engagement or intellectual growth. Nietzsche perceives a kind of intoxication in Wagner's music that dulls the intellect and promotes a form of escapism that he finds detrimental to the cultural and spiritual development of individuals and society as a whole. He accuses Wagner of being an actor and a musician of decadence. Nietzsche sees Wagner's art as an expression of weakness and degeneration, citing Wagner's own infirmities and sicknesses as evidence of his inherent decadence. According to Nietzsche, Wagner's music corresponds to an aesthetic of illness rather than health, portraying Wagner's works as symptomatic of a wider cultural decline. He contrasts this aesthetic with the Greek ideal of Apollonian clarity and sculptural beauty, which Nietzsche upholds as a standard of artistic and cultural health. Central to Nietzsche's argument is the concept of decadence, a term he repeatedly uses to define what he sees as the degenerate tendencies in Wagner's work and in modern German culture. Nietzsche suggests that Wagner's operas, with their emphasis on pathos, Christian themes, and redemption through love, are manifestations of what he calls the spirit of gravity, a force that weighs down the potential for human excellence and nobility. He believes that Wagner's art fosters a certain weakness and emotional dependency that is antithetical to the development of free spirits and the Übermensch, a concept Nietzsche introduces as the ideal of human evolution and self-overcoming. Nietzsche further criticizes Wagner's flirtation with various philosophies and ideologies, particularly Schopenhauer's pessimism and the notions of German nationalism. He argues that Wagner's pursuit of a nationalist agenda through his work only serves to reinforce petty chauvinisms and cultural insularity. While Nietzsche once praised Wagner for seemingly embracing Schopenhauer's affirmation of the primacy of will, he later denounces Wagner for succumbing to the nihilism and life denial inherent in Schopenhauer's philosophy. In Nietzsche's eyes, Wagner seemed to be caught in the struggle between the desire for genuine artistry and the temptation to pander to the masses. Whereas initially, Nietzsche viewed Wagner as a potential savior of culture, someone who could lead a cultural rebirth, he gradually came to see Wagner as partaking in the malaise of modernity rather than being its antidote. Nietzsche also takes issue with Wagner's adaptation of Christian mythology in his operas, notably in his final masterpiece, Parsifal. Nietzsche views this turn to Christian motifs as emblematic of Wagner's ultimate surrender to the herd instinct and life-negating morality of Christianity. For Nietzsche, who had declared God is dead, and who sought to overcome traditional religious morality, Wagner's incorporation of Christian elements in his work was a betrayal of the potential for a truly new and revitalizing cultural movement. Nietzsche conveys his preference for the Dionysian aspect of art, which he associates with life-affirming energies, chaos, and creativity, as opposed to the Apollonian element, which he connects with order and form. Whereas he initially believed Wagner's music embodied a synthesis of the Dionysian and Apollonian, Nietzsche ultimately contends that Wagner's music fails to authentically capture the raw, 
primal force of the Dionysian spirit, which he holds to be necessary for genuine artistic renewal. In counterpoint to Wagner, Nietzsche extols the virtues of what he deems to be healthier art and culture. He praises the French writer Georges Bizet and his opera Carmen for exuding vitality, simplicity, and Mediterranean cheerfulness, all of which he finds lacking in Wagner's compositions. Nietzsche perceives in Carmen a celebration of life and sensuality that stands in direct opposition to the heavy, somber, and complex mythological worlds of Wagnerian drama. Throughout Nietzsche contra Wagner, Nietzsche articulates his vision of what art and culture should strive for. He is unapologetically in favor of an art that is life-affirming rather than life-denying, that celebrates earthly existence and the possibilities of human greatness instead of wallowing in mysticism, self-pity, and otherworldliness. He calls for a rejection of the Wagnerian spectacle and the resurrection of a more classical, healthy, and noble artistic spirit. Nietzsche's critique of Wagner is deeply personal and attests to his own intellectual journey, from his early enthusiasm for Wagner's work to his eventual disillusionment. Nietzsche's break with Wagner reflects a broader philosophical dispute, with Nietzsche championing values such as individualism, strength, creativity, and affirmation of life against what he saw as Wagner's decadence, weakness, and subservience to the metaphysical and moral norms of the day. In conclusion, Nietzsche's Nietzsche contra Wagner is a vehement expression of his disavowal of Richard Wagner's music and philosophy, a manifesto that lays bare the conflict between Nietzsche's ideal of cultural regeneration and what he saw as the regressive tendencies in Wagner's art. Nietzsche's criticisms extend beyond the personal and into a wider cultural critique. For him, Wagner exemplifies a turning away from the vitality and nobility that Nietzsche sees as essential to not only art, but to life itself. Nietzsche offers Nietzsche contra Wagner as both a farewell to his past Wagnerian enthusiasms and a clarion call for a future cultural renaissance that would embrace the values of strength, health, and life affirmation he so ardently espoused.